Hey guys, we are back with another adoption update. So first of all, before we get into anything, we just wanted to say thank you so, so much for all of the support that you guys gave us via texts, phone calls, Instagram comments, hugs in person, all of that. We are so grateful for all the support that we've had so far. It means more than you guys know. Um, so since our uh, announcement video, we've had a lot of questions from friends and family. See, something that we found is a lot of folks that we know, know someone who knows someone who adopted, but the process itself seems so long and scary and complicated and there's not a lot of clarity to it so in the effort of making this more understandable we wanted to take you guys through where we are right now in the process what that looks like and then answer some frequently asked questions so Matt where are we now uh, we are in the middle of the paperwork phase yes so it goes paperwork then what's called your home study, and then we'll go into what's called the sort of like waiting period where at any point in time we could be matched with an expectant mother. So right now we are in the very beginning of the, well not the very, we're in the like middle of the, the, middle paperwork, of the paperwork. paperwork. So we had our in, uh, intake meeting um, in early August, mid Mid August. It was mid August. And that intake meeting was four hours long <laughs> and answered a lot of the questions that we have. They asked us a lot of questions about our background, our feelings on parenting, all of that kind of stuff, um, just to kind of get an initial feel for who we are and, and where we're headed in this adoption process. Um, and then they sent us home with a huge envelope full of paperwork. Um, and so we're going to take you guys through the entire list of all of the paperwork that we have to get filled out. We're not going to like walk you through what each of them says, but just so you guys know for Virginia, this is what the home study checklist looks like. Take it away, Matt. All right. So we have a um, pre-adoption group training that we have to attend. So we'll be attending that at the end of this month. Mm -hmm. No, um, next month. Sorry, next month. Sorry. Yeah, I end of it. next month. End of next month. Um, the, we have two web-based adoption training courses we have to do. Um, there's a confidentiality agreement that we have to um, sign um, documentation of training forms, individual personal biographies. Which is so interesting to write. They want you to write like five to seven pages, basically telling your life story. I'm already up to eight, and I think I'm in my like early 20s in this point of the autobiography. Have uh, you written yours yet? I am in the outline phase. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we have general medical forms by physicians, including copies of all laboratory results um, and a TB test form. So we have to get physicals make sure that everything is healthy blood work blood work fun stuff which abby's terrified of yeah like legit needle phobe matt has to come in and hold my hand so that i don't pass out which i love doing again yeah i love that you do that so then um, we have to also do a self-reported medical form um, that's signed by the physician that's so what we report and then the physician um, verifies and our doctor's office was so good about getting those forms filled out in a timely manner and our doctors were super helpful which was just it was cool to feel supported not just by like friends and family but like our medical staff that we're working mm -hmm. with uh, and then a release form from any therapist that you've seen in the past five years and I think the purpose of that is just to make sure that like um, they want to check with the therapist to make sure that there's not anything that would prohibit you from being a parent or prohibit you from being like a healthy parent mm -hmm. Um, copies of your 1040 federal tax return from the previous so year. Fun. <laughs> um, a financial statement with supporting documents. Basically, any number that you put on there, like your what your number is in your bank account, what number is in your retirement account. Any you investments have to have, that you have. Any investments, you have to put um, some sort of proof with it as well. Okay. Does it, do we have to put like proof of our home's value or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So any assets as well? Any assets okay. as well. You have to actually put proof and, and that's as simple as putting like a Zillow listing okay. printed. Okay. Um, then a monthly ex income and expense form. So this is just the monthly actual, like you don't have to have proof for this, but this is just your average, like what you spend on utilities, what you spend on um, groceries, anything you put on for a monthly expense. Mm -hmm. um, you have to do a copy of your marriage certificate um, if you're married. Right. Um, a copy of birth certificates, and then the social worker that comes to the home study will have to actually see the birth certificate. Verify those, mm -hmm. that they're legit. Correct. Super legit. That you've actually been burnt, birthed. Birthed? Birthed. Okay. Or born. Or born, however you want to say it. Okay. Um, if you're not a citizen, you have to do a uh, copy of your citizenship card. Um, and then if you've been previously divorced, you have to do a copy of divorce decrees. We have not been previously divorced, right. so. Nor will be we be divorced in the future. Correct. Ever, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have to do a letter from employer of each applicant stating applicant's title, length of time employed, annual salary. Um, so for us, it's pretty easy because we are self-employed. 
We can just write the letters ourselves. It guess. says, if self-employed, third-party verification of income, and that can oh, just be as simple as your tax return. Tax return. Um, so copies of certified driving records. So we just had to go to the DMV. Order no, we didn't on. even have to go to the oh, DMV. Oh, true. Just order we online. We had to do it online. Yeah, that's great. That's nice. This is, see, this is the thing that was hard for me when we started the paperwork because we had like one Saturday where I was like, we're going to sit down and like bang all of this out and get it completely done. We set a timer for three hours, which is not enough time to do all of this paperwork. But the thing that's like drives me crazy is it's I can't you can't just sit down and do all of it a lot of it is like okay apply for this or send off for this and then wait on the mail for those things to come in Mm -hmm. um which you've been doing correct most of that but I wish that we could just sit down and do it all in one afternoon anyway keep going we still got more um proof of auto insurance and life insurance we did not have life insurance before so we're getting that we should have got we we like initially applied for that like five four five years ago Uh and just like Never, never did it. Followed so, up with it. So now it's something that we have. Um, you have to do a guardianship agreement from um, designated guardian. So they want you. This is an illegally binding contact, but they they want you to think of who you would want your kids to have as guardians in case something were to happen to you. Mm-hmm. And you have to have them sign, sign it. it. Correct. Does it have to be notarized? I don't remember. It it's just notarized. so that like the person that you're appointing is like guardian knows that they're yeah, being appointed so they're not a like, guardian. Oh, this is okay. <laughs> Um, you have to do a signed copy of corporal punishment statements, basically a statement saying that you won't use corporal punishment in the mm-hmm. home. They also want photos of each applicant, which we turned in with our initial application. Correct. Um, and if you have any children um, and you're adopting, they want filled with photos of the children as well. Yeah. Um, a signed statement of childhood immunization policy. Just That we sh- will get our kids vaccinated. Correct. Correct. Um, a weapons policy, so that way we're showing that um, any weapons, if we have them, would be safe from children. So like if you have guns in your home, which we don't, but if you did, that those would be kept locked and um, ammunition separate. Separately. I think separately and like up and out of reach of children. Correct. Um, a written plan of evacuation from your home. So you have to do a floor plan showing um, how you're going to get out of the house two ways. So either by the windows and then by stairs. Yep. Um, and then you have to have the rooms labeled and exits marked. Yeah. Well, did we just take the listing from our from our Zillow listing when we bought our house? Mm-hmm. We just like printed off the floor plan from that and like marked on that what our exit plan would be. Um, we have to do a family emergency preparedness and response plan, which is when a fire happens, where are you guys going to meet? Like if your family gets separated while evacuated, like let's say Matt and child number one like go out the back and I have to go exit out the front, like where are we going to rendezvous um, in case we get separated in the event of emergency? Mm-hmm. Um, a fire safety survey, so they have us go check our house to make sure we have a you know fire extinguisher, smoke alarms in the rooms. Smoke um, detectors. Smoke detectors starting up. Does, do we have to have CO2 detector as well? Um, I'm Carbon sure. monoxide? Carbon monoxide. Carbon um, monoxide. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> okay. Well, we have one. We have one. And we also have super sensitive smoke detectors that like to go off when you make toast. Regular toast. Not burnt toast. <laughs> just, regular just regular toast. toast. Yeah. Um, there's a Virginia home environment checklist just to make sure your home is capable of we lived in by a child. What do you mean? Oh, like there's a room for them yeah. and there's like adequate facilities. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Correct. Um, proof of pet vaccination and a copy of pet licenses. So if you have pets, that's something to worry about, which we do. So yeah. I mean, if you're a pet owner who keeps up with your dogs and cats vaccinations, then it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Um, then you have to do clearances from any jurisdictions um, that you've resided in during the past five years. So you need to do a criminal, um, which is state police and FBI. And you have to do child protective services. Um, and then a sworn disclosure statement. And you have um, to get fingerprinted for that as well, stuff. right? Correct. Yeah, and that's just to make sure, again, like, that people who are adopting have no, like, serious criminal record mm-hmm. or any record of, like, child abuse or neglect or anything like that because they want to make sure the kids that are being placed are being placed in homes that are really going to care for them and love for them. Mm-hmm. Love them. Um, and then lastly, it's a signed copy of the fee agreement and the service agreement with our um, adoption agency. Yeah. So that's, I think we counted it up, 29 pieces of paperwork and or things that needed to be collected. How far would you say we're like we're probably about 75% of the way? 60? 60-ish. 60% of the way done? Yeah. Great. Um, another thing also that's not on here is, is um, references from four yes. people that are not family members. I don't know if that's particular to our agency, that number, but Correct. I know that for... Any home study, you have to have references from non-family members. And for our agency in particular, again, I don't know if this changes based on who you're working with, but um, one of those 
for references has to go for an in-person interview. Mm-hmm. Kind of like a character witness just to make sure, again, that, that the people that they're approving to adopt um, are safe and are going to be good parents, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, after all of that, we have some very frequently asked questions that we wanted to address just to make it super easy for any of our friends and family who are watching this, but then also folks who are maybe thinking about adopting, preparing to adopt, know that these are questions that you're probably going to get. First up is, so, like, what's the general timeline for this whole process? Um, So, for us, it's been probably with the home study and paperwork process, it'll probably take three to four months. Right. So the overall process in general, usually my answer for this is um, once you're through the home study process, it can be anywhere from like a three month to like a two and a half year wait before Mm -hmm. you're matched with an expectant mother or matched with a baby and placed with a baby in your home. Um, And and, this is specifically for domestic infant adoption. Yes, this is very particular to domestic infant adoption. If you're adopting um, internationally or if you're adopting kids here in the U.S. that are older than infant level, that this is going to be totally different. Um, But that's the general timeline we've been given anywhere from three months which would be very much on the short end of things to like two and a half to three years Um, and the reason for that is because it's not just like a list system it's not okay who's up next okay that person gets the next baby it's very interpersonal and it it really depends on um, who you guys are and what your home life looks like and like what your relationship looks like and what kind of child you're looking to be parents to um because here in the U.S., domestic infant adoption is the the expectant mothers are often the ones to choose who it is that they're going to place their baby with, which I think is so cool. Because mm-hmm. in the past, it's been very like hush hushed. Like you give your child to an adoption agency, and then the adoption agency like you know chooses who receives the baby. There's like nobody knows who anyone is, and so here in the U.S., they're tending a lot more towards open adoption, um, and that looks really different depending on what your relationship looks like with your birth mom, um, like you as the couple. Your relationship looks like some open adoptions. It's just a matter of like sending photos and like a letter update to the agency um, a couple times a year, and then the agency facilitates getting those um, photographs and letters to the to the birth mom. Sometimes it's actually knowing who each other is. Um, Um, having phone numbers, doing maybe once a year um, visitation. It really, really depends on what your comfort level is and what your unique situation is with your birth mom. And so um, because birth moms are so involved in choosing who it is that they want to place their baby with, that, as you can imagine, that three to three month to like two and a half to three year time period is going to to vary vastly. Um, So that's uh, a lot of where that sort of uncertainty comes from. Prior to going into the waiting stage, um, there, like we said, there's the paperwork and then the home study. So paperwork generally takes like six to eight weeks, mm-hmm. and we are in the middle of that right now. That's the first. After you apply, that's the first step. Um, and then after your paperwork is the home study, which is a series of three to four um, in-person interviews with you and your spouse. Um, one of them has to be done in the home, and then they're going to do one with you individually, mm-hmm. one with me individually, and then I think one more, the two of us together. Cool. So. And and a lot of that is um, asking about mental his, mental history, psychological history, your upbringing, what your views on parenting are. Just again, making sure that you are a equipped um and that's not to say like you have to be the perfect parent going into this because anyone who's ever parented ever will tell you there's no such thing as a perfect parent Mm -hmm. but this that they want to make sure going in that you understand what it is you're entering into that you're prepared um that you are able capable that you have uh, a home that can support a child that there's no um there's no like immediate danger in like the places where they're going to be living um that kind of thing anything to add to that no, I think you got it covered pretty well. Yeah. So we're, like we said, in the ooh, computer got dark. Uh, we're in the earlier stages of that. So what we're hoping is that by early to mid December that we will be in the waiting parent pool, which means at any point in time we could get a call, but we're prepared that it's probably gonna be a while. A while. Um, yeah, so that was the first frequently asked question. Second frequently asked question is why is the process so invasive? Because that's a lot. I mean, you guys saw this entire sheet. That's so much information. I mean, part of it is they just need to make sure that you are who you say you are. Um, mm-hmm. They need to make sure that you're healthy and not just physically, but mentally healthy for um, and mentally prepared for children. Mm-hmm. Um, that way you, you know what you're getting yourself into, that you aren't being either forced into it or like one spouse, one spouse is like spouse super is, pumped and correct. the other one's kind of passive about it. Correct. And so they want you to make sure that you are prepared the best you can be for having a child in your home, especially a child that is born of someone 
else. Yeah. Um, and the thing about adoption that we're learning that I really don't think I understood coming into it is that adoption always begins with some kind of brokenness, whether mm-hmm. that's the death of a parent or the inability to parent or um, situation beyond parents' control that they're just not able to provide for a child. There's always grief that accompanies adoption. That's just the very nature of what it is. Um, and so what the adoption agency wants to make sure is that when removing a child um, from their birth parents' care voluntarily, obviously, um, when when they're doing that, that, that they're placing that child in a home where there's not, this isn't going to happen again. That this that this um, rupture between parent and birth child, that that's not anything that will ever have to occur. That kind of um, trauma won't, won't occur again in placing them in a home with two adoptive parents who aren't prepared or aren't capable of providing a safe home for the baby. So that's why it's so in depth. It seems kind of crazy because I think like my question going into this was like, why is this so hard? Like there's so many kids who need great homes and we would be great parents. And it's yes, like true, but they want to make sure that we would be capable. Yeah. And we know we'd be great parents, but they need to know that, that we'd be great. Right. And they need to be like a hundred percent sure mm-hmm. of that before they place a baby with us. Um, so third and final question, are you collecting baby stuff yet? Uh, currently we are not. Um, we want to wait until we are at least placed, um, just because, you know, it could take two years and we, so we don't want to be having that as a reminder of what right. it could be. When we first started trying to get pregnant, um, we would like every once in a while buy like, oh my gosh, like a George Mason Passy or like a Washington Nationals onesie. And like, I think I bought a couple of like cute maternity shirts. Um, and like the longer it took us to get pregnant, the harder it was to see those things around the home. Cause it kind of felt like those, those items were mocking us, <laughs> even though they weren't, it was just a set, like a, I think that's a thing that a lot of parents do. They buy things in hope and anticipation. Um, and kn- just knowing how hard it was to have those things around our home. We don't want to prepare a whole nursery and buy like you know a closet full of baby clothes and diapers and a diaper genie and all of that stuff that parents need um and then have to wait for two years and walk past that room every day and be reminded again and again and again that our dreams still haven't been fulfilled so right now we are waiting on collecting um really anything baby related and we've had so many friends generously offer some of their things and we're so grateful mm-hmm. um and so us saying thank you so much but we can't take that right now is never a sign of us being ungrateful it's just we want to make sure that we're protecting our hearts and want to make sure that we're not collecting a bunch of things that um <laughs> may end that's what happens when you don't turn your phone on silent we want to make sure that we're not collecting a bunch of things that uh, may become redundant or like i mean i i just learned the other week that like car seats expire um we don't want to collect a car seat and then have that expire and take that away from someone who could use that right now mm-hmm. so i think what we'll end up doing is based on one of my good friend's advice who her family adopted three kids um, was that once we finished the home study and we're like in the waiting parent pool to like gather supplies that we could could need within like the first month of a baby's time with us here baby's you know part of our family so like maybe when we're done with our home study we'll get like a bassinet and like a car seat and, and like diapers and, and like stuff. Just a to, pack of di- just you know in case the, the call comes at any time yeah we can be prepared for the first month yeah because sometimes what happens is like birth moms don't always i mean you don't always get chosen like while birth mom is pregnant sometimes it happens they get a call from the hospital like the agency gets a call from the hospital like hey we've got a mom she just delivered she wants to place um who do you have that's that's available on the waiting list that you think might be a good fit based on the level of openness that this birth mom is looking for? And so you could get a call and like only have five days to prepare. So we may have some of the like big stuff, but big essential stuff mm-hmm. that you need right away. Um, and then like after that, kind of figure out from there, okay, what do we need? Like maybe fill out a registry or something like that. But we don't know. It's At this point, that's still far enough away that we're just trying to concentrate on what's in front of us right now so that we can do a really good job of nailing that paperwork and then we move forward into the home study process get a better idea from our agency of how we should prepare when we should prepare maybe some essentials that we should buy because i'm sure that they'll be able to give us some advice on that right yeah i think so yeah so Hope that was informative. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. We would love to answer them. And thanks so much for watching, guys. We really appreciate the chance to share with you. Thank you. 